There comes a time when you're programming that code can build up and become too complex for one single main function, or maybe that you're using a few lines of code over in several different places, in which case functions are easier. Well, yes, you can do functions in Bash, but it's not like other programming languages. And you'll see why in a moment, in particular with passing arguments into a function, that's done differently because you don't you don't set the arguments when you're writing the function, you're passing the arguments in during the time of when the program is being run. First off, syntax there for a basic function. You've got function name, the brace brackets, and then the code inside it. But of course the standard in Unix and Linux is there's at least two ways of writing the same thing. And that's the other way of writing a function. So you can use either or there. I call that the one with just you putting the brackets at the end because the colours in gedit make it a bit more obvious of what it actually is. So this one, I'm inputting variables into a function. Use it like that. $1, $2, however many variables you're passing into the function. If you want to see all variables of the function, it's dollar asterisk. So let's see how that looks. So in what would be the main function if you're a C or C++ developer. Hey, I used to do C++ a long time ago. I've forgotten most of it now. But that's what I would consider this part to be. So passing the variables in, we'll take a string. Hi there, everyone. Oh, and let's put a number here, two. Right, save this and see what it looks like. As always, the way to run a bash script is bash, then the script's name. Right, notice the difference here. So we got just a message of it being a basic function. Then foo2, we had the input variables, where I only displayed the first two variables, hi there. Then you can see the difference where we've got all input variables, we've got hi there, everyone, two. Now let's look at returning a variable from a function. Wow. <laughs> this is not as easy as you might think. Sure, you could put return $1. So we return the variable that's just been entered into the function. But that won't do anything. What we need to do, run the function. Uh, there's a couple of different methods here. In fact, there's probably more than that, but I'm just going to show you two of the methods. var1 equals dollar question mark. Because the return value there gets put into, was it the error code? I think it is. Just a bit more messing around with that. Won't work because we just use the return variable. You'll see why in a moment. So let's output those on the screen. Save it. And we go and run it. Ah, there you see. var1 equals 25, which is what we put in. var2 equals 0. I've used the error code once, and it just seems to disappear. I don't know why. Oh, that's the curiosities of Bash. Just put a slight variant on the return variable function. So I declare a local variable. That's a variable that only exists inside this function. We'll do a bit of maths on it. Let ret equals ret minus 5. And ret return that value. So I'm calling the function return variable 2 with the value 20 as the input. Same as before, we make a variable that takes the error code. So firstly, can we see the local variable with the return value, ret? And then we'll just output var3. Now just a further pointer about this error number. If we put in a number that's too high, 256, you'll see what happens now. So you notice there that the first variable now only equals zero. If it's beyond 255, it just zeros. Variable two was zero anyway. Can we see the local variable? No, there's nothing displayed there. Var3 equals 15, yes, because we put in 20 minus 5, and that would equal 15. And the final method of returning a variable is we just use a global variable. Declare a variable global ret equals 0. So we'll do a simple bit of maths on that. We'll take in one argument and add 1 to it, and you'll see why. Right. So I'll call the function with the value of 260. And then we just write on the screen what the global ret variable is. Now it doesn't matter, I've declared it in one function and used it in another, because it's a global variable, it's not a local variable. We use it a couple of times, we'll see what happens here. On the screen I should see 261 and 271. Let's see what happens. And there you go. That's a look at a few different methods of using functions in Bash.
Right, next tutorial we'll start getting on to something more complex now, we've covered most of the basics of Bash. Thanks for watching, see you later.